I'm Shilpa from Gizbot.com. Today I'm here with Mr. Krishna Srinivasan, who is the Managing Director of Alarm Research India. So without any delay, let us begin with our discussion. Hello, sir. Okay, so firstly, we would like to know something more about Alarm Research India, its businesses, as well as its product portfolio. So Alarm Research India is actually a subsidiary, a wholly owned subsidiary of Alarm Research Corporation mm -hmm. in the US. Lamb Research Corporation is a company that builds semiconductor capital equipment and we are com completely focused on the semiconductor capital equipment field and we uh, place our equipment in certain critical uh, steps and functions in the manufacture of semiconductor devices. So we are known for our deposition equipment, our etching equipment and for cleaning, wafer cleaning. Um, and so Lamb India here uh, provides software engineering as well as hardware design engineering for the various products that LAMB sells and for most part we support all the products that LAMB sells. We have design engineering in areas of uh, things like structural frames, sheet metal enclosures, power boxes, uh, reactant distribution, distribution systems and the, the process chambers itself, the reactors itself in which semiconductor processes take place. Okay, so let me ask you something regarding semiconductors. Hmm. So according to you, how will India look like? in this uh, memory chipset or in a semiconductor area in uh, next few years? Well, the next few years, I think primarily we'll be focused on the manufacturing ecosystem mm -hmm. for assembly of electronic devices. Uh, obviously, semiconductors are an input into that because semiconductors form a very high portion of almost all consumer electronics. For example, the smartphone that you carry in your pocket, uh, from a bill of materials perspective, at least 70% of the cost of that phone is in semiconductor chipsets. So India by itself does not actually today have a commercial semiconductor industry, but we are taking the next logical steps towards it through the uh, assembly of things like handsets, set-top boxes and other electronics in the country, which gradually would lead towards climbing the value chain and semiconductor manufacturing itself or IC manufacturing itself is at the top of that value chain. And so I would anticipate that in a matter of maybe a few years to maybe about a decade, India will be making firm steps towards the manufacture of semiconductor devices itself, which would be a great thing for people like us at LAMB Research because one of the things that would make our operation here much more effective would be the uh, creation of a semiconductor manufacturing ecosystem in which we could participate and to which we could sell our equipment. So we're hoping that in a matter of a few years, with the right government policies in place, with the right incentives in place, that uh, semiconductor global manufacturers will be able to position their fabs or their factories in India. Yeah, that's good to know. So, can you name any specific brand? It can be other laptops or uh, smartphones who are really working hard to make a huge difference in the semiconductor area? Well, so uh, semiconductor devices are used in a wide range of day-to-day -day appliances and um, gadgets. So obviously the smartphone is the most obvious one for most people in India. Um, and just as a consequence of the widespread adoption of smartphones in India, obviously India faces a very, very high trade deficit in electronics. And I think the government itself has said that by about 2022, the trade deficit or the import bill for electronics might be crossing the import bill for gold and oil. And we're talking about a $400 billion import bill for electronics because of the widespread ado adoption of semiconductor devices here or electronic devices here. Um, the smartphone is, the, is one of many, many areas in which widespread semiconductor adoption is creating an enormous excitement. The other thing that people talk about are things like IoT and cloud. So uh, Internet of Things mm -hmm. where semiconductor content and intelligence is embedded in a variety of different areas in a distributed network. Because it's so widely distributed, the gathering of data from that, the transmission of the data, the processing of the data requires extensive infrastructure investments in networks, network equipment, communication equipment, and also in network storage, all of which are very heavy consumers of semiconductors. So if you were to look at it from uh, the perspective of a company like LAM, we sell a lot of equipment into industry 
that's building out this infrastructure, this communication, processing and storage infrastructure for all the data coming in from these web-enabled devices. Another area of great interest to us is the transition from um, kind of hard disk drive media for storage to solid state media for storage. So these days, most laptops that you buy, uh, I believe I read somewhere that 50 to 60% of all the uh, computer equipment that you would buy in this 2017 is likely to be uh, featuring solid state drives and not hard disk drives. So that transition also has enormous value to us because of the proliferation of demand for things like NAND flash memory. Another, another driver for semiconductor content is um, widespread digitization of everyday life. So uh, it's pretty obvious to anyone that's lived for a, more than 20 years that things that used to be analog in format, whether it's the music that you hear it on a day-to-day -day basis, or the appliances that you control, whether it's your microwave oven or your washing machine, are all now digitally enabled. And anytime anything gets digitally enabled, it means semiconductor content, whether it's processors, storage, um, special purpose chips, anything like that. And so I think the increasing digitization, the increasing adoption of digital devices, the network and the infrastructure necessary to manage all these devices, uh, seems to point to a very bright future in that area. Okay, so any research on uh, like how Indian smartphone industries have been doing in this area? Well, the Indian smartphone industry has been focused primarily on uh, uh, affordability. Mm -hmm. yeah. And affordability so that the widest demographic uh, can afford and own smartphones. So I think Indian smartphone uh, industry has been driving cost uh, or at least the highest amount of features at the lowest possible cost, which is what the Indian smartphone industry is doing. And as a consequence, it's obviously been driving our customers, the semiconductor manufacturers, to lower the cost of integrated circuits or semiconductor devices. And so that is an incentive for our customers, the Samsungs of the world or the Intels of the world, to continue marching down the path set out by Gordon Moore about 50 years ago, which is to keep reducing the cost of semiconductor devices, even as they become more complex, capable, and have more capacity. And as we drive that cost down, our customers depend on us, people like LAM, to enable that onward march, to be able to provide high productivity, high technology equipment that they can then use to effectively and efficiently make chips that are lower in cost. And so I think the, if I were to encapsulate um, in one sentence, I'd say the relentless downward pressure on prices in India, the desire for value is driving innovation at the semiconductor device manufacturers for them to reduce costs while maintaining capability and capacity. Exactly. Okay, so let me ask you like, uh, can you say in briefly like what is 3D and technology and what it means to devices like laptops and mobiles which we use on daily basis? Yeah. So, I mean, I, I would, um, the analogy that I would use for 3D NAND is simply Bangalore. If we look outside mm -hmm. at, the, at the landscape, when I was growing up in Bangalore, it used to be a pretty flat city. Uh, everything was two stories and three stories because we have a lot of land available here. There are no geographical uh, boundaries such as uh, mountains or seashore. But as Bangalore got more and more populated, uh, you began to see skyscrapers because we needed to more efficiently and effectively pack people into their living space and their working space. So consequently, you now begun to see multi-story apartment complexes and multi-story tech parks where we house a lot of people very efficiently with a minimal amount of land. So if you were to take that same analogy and extend it to semiconductors, uh, what would happen in the, in the 2D NAND world, in the two-dimensional world, the way they could pack more capacity into the same chip was by shrinking the size of the transistor. And they could keep shrinking it, shrinking it over the number of years that we've had NAND, NAND flash technology, up until a point where basic semiconductor and solid state physics begin to get in the way and you begin to have things like cross communication and interference between adjacent cells. And so they figured out that they couldn't shrink beyond a certain point in two dimensions by shrinking the size of the transistor. So now instead of doing a two dimensional shrink on the size of the transistor, 
they're building the transistors up vertically. So instead of having one flat landscape, you now have a three-dimensional landscape where you're packing multiple transistors by stacking them one on top of another. Think of it like a skyscraper of transistors. And so that's what 3D NAND flash has. The impact it has is enormous. As I've said in a previous answer, we're seeing hard disk drives being replaced by NAND flash. NAND flash is very reliable because it's solid state. It doesn't break when you jerk your device around. It, um, it keeps its information or keeps memory for a very long period of time. I actually have pen drives that are 10 years old that have still retained their information. And so it's very reliable. And at the same time, what you're able to do is in a very small form factor, pack enormous amounts of memory. So these days, it's not unusual to buy an Apple iPhone with 128 gigabytes of flash memory, which is almost equivalent to what you used to get in a desktop computer about 10 years ago. So the ability to pack enormous amounts of information in very small form factors at a very reliable rate is the innovation that we seem to see going forward. Um, you know, it's not unusual to go find thumb drives and pen drives, 64 gigs, 128 gigs, the size of your thumb, literally. And that's the magic that you see. Yeah, that's a good example, by the way. Can you say something about uh, transformative memory technology and also its uh, inflections? Uh, th at this point, you know, we are working with our customers on a number of different technologies. Mm -hmm. There are different customers who are trying out different uh, transformative mem memory technologies, such as resistive RAM. Okay. Uh, phase change RAM. Um, which of these technologies wins out is, it remains to be seen. But I think what we are confident about is that we will collaboratively work, LAM, people like LAM, mm -hmm. will collaboratively work with our customers to enable these new technologies. There are going to be new challenges in processing technologies because they're going to be using new materials and all of these things are going to be opportunities for LAM. One of the things that we pride ourselves on being is being a very collaborative company. We collaborate with our customers, we collaborate with our vendors, we try and find the best technologies for our customers, and we try to make sure that our vendors are also successful. And if we keep that particular core value of ours, our ability to work in teams, our ability to collaborate, I'm sure that no matter what technology our customers want to adopt, LAM will be there with equipment for our customers to enable our customers' success. Okay, that was a good promise. Okay, so finally, uh, can you say some of the major problems faced in the semiconductor space? Well, I think the, the foremost problem that everyone in our industry solves is a technical problem. Mm -hmm. So our customers are very demanding yeah. because their customers are very demanding. And their customers are demanding because people like you and me want to have the latest gadget when we walk around the streets, want to have all the information in the world at our fingertips, want to be able to dial up and call up anything that we want at any time. Mm -hmm. And so this connectedness to the wider range of information available on the internet and other places like that drives our customers, the chip manufacturers, to be very fast moving, very aggressive and very demanding. Which in turn puts enormous technical pressures on people like LAM. So I would say that the foremost challenge in the semiconductor industry is one of technology. A second important um, challenge that we have is speed to solution and that's because once again the appetite for technology is absolutely voracious all over the world. Two to five years there's going to be a complete replacement cycle where Indians are going to adopt smartphones at very very large, very very large numbers placing an enormous stress on the uh, infrastructure, on the availability of data transmission capability and also on cost because for uh, many Indians in rural places to afford a smartphone it has to be priced appropriately. So all of those demands percolate to people like LAM through our customers and so that's going to be a, a very big challenge. Uh, a third big challenge I can think of, so speed to solution, a third big challenge is to try and get the talent that we need for our industry. Our industry is a very large consumer of technical talent. And it's a very large consumer of technical talent across all engineering and science disciplines. So we have mechanical engineers in this building, chemical engineers, material scientists, electrical engineers, electronics engineers, software engineers, industrial engineers, production engineers. Our industry also uh, employs chemists, physicists um, of various sorts. And 
So the ability to find uh, the best talent in the world and put them to work on these very difficult problems that our customers are posing to us is also a large challenge for the semiconductor, semiconductor industry. Which is one of the reasons that people like Lamb Research are looking to India as the right place where sophisticated technical talent that speaks English can be put to work on some of these most difficult problems that in the end we ourselves are causing because of the demand that we place on our customers for the latest in, in gadgets and the latest in technology. So in a sense that's kind of a self-fulfilling ecosystem where the demands that we as consumers place on the industry is creating the demand for technical talent that we can provide for India. And that's, uh, if I would to say, those are the three things. So it's time to sign off now. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for being with us. Yeah, it was nice speaking to you. It's nice speaking to you. Yeah. Thank you.